Hey, Steven here, and I promise I am not that guy who is always preaching. Mm. Brothers, brothers, brothers. See, when are we going to think of ourselves as more than this? An old man was dying and laid on his deathbed. He and his wife were devout atheists for about their whole lives. But at this moment, he told his wife to cover all the bases. When asked what he meant by that, he said, pray for me. This story is a perfect illustration of what is known as Pascal's Wager. Pascal was a 1600s French philosopher, mathematician, and a staunch believer in God in association with the Catholic Church. He believed that we could not effectively prove if God exists or not, so we should simply choose to believe. His wager is that we should believe in God because if he turns out to be real, then we get to go to heaven. However, if he doesn't, then it doesn't matter if we believe in him or not because we will just get nothing upon death. But if we choose not to believe in God, and he turns out to be real, then we get to spend an eternity in hell. So we should put our bets on believing in God, just in case he is real. There are many problems with this wager that many have already pointed out. The wager does not go any further than simply believing. What if God also required us to do some works? But here I think Pascal just thought that if we believe, then we are on the right track, and works would follow. He says that if we feel like we can't just force ourselves to believe in God, then we should walk the walk and talk the talk until we are able to will ourselves to believe. And then another problem arises with the wager in which it ignores all other religions except for Christianity. What if you? What do you do if you believe in Christ only to find out that instead you should have been worshiping Brahma or Vishnu? Or what if God is someone else entirely that no one is worshipping at the moment? Here I think that one could say that it does not matter who God is, as long as you believe in him and commit to living a righteous life. Essentially, worship the kind of God you would want to worship. This doesn't mean that you should go out and start your own church. Keep it personal. If it helps, go out and study many different religions until you find one that suits you. Be open to all possibilities in order to properly seek after the true and living God. Jesus confirmed this most basic of all commands when he said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And the constant cry of all the prophets of all the ages is, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. And he has planted in our hearts an instinctive desire to worship, to seek salvation, to love and serve a power or being greater than ourselves. Worship is implicit in existence itself. The issue is not whether men shall worship, but who or what is to be the object of their devotions and how they shall go about paying their devotions to their chosen Most High. And the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him, for unto such hath God promised his spirit. And they who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus said, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. As the creator of everything, God would know every law that governs the universe. He has no new truth to learn or experiment on. He knows all things. To know God is to know truth, and to know truth is to know God. Man's search for truth, therefore, is man's search for God. Those who seek after truth, wherever it is, will surely find God. Where, whether it be under a bed, at the bottom of the ocean, or in the farthest reaches of the universe, 
A seeker for truth never stops his or her search for truth. He or she is open and hungry to learn from others truths that they may not have known yet. Even if they have to look for truth in their enemies and are forced to give up falsehoods created by biases. Accordingly, Thomas Jefferson taught, question with boldness even the existence of a god, because if there be one, he must more approve the homage of reason than that of blindfolded fear. Indeed, to question God is to question the very fabric of reality itself. We should act as Joseph Smith acted to find God, for he was surrounded by many different churches and ideologies. He questioned all of them, even questioning his own family's beliefs. He studied the Bible intensely, prayed, and meditated often, until finally he eventually found the true and living God. With these resolutions to the problems of Pascal's wager, there yet remains one major problem, possibly the most important problem. The problem is best represented in the game Nier Automata. The game is set in a post-apocalyptic world, where we play as androids created by humans, fighting machines created by aliens, in an eternal war for the fate of the world. The only problem is, aliens have been extinct for thousands of years. Having been disconnected from their source, machines have formed various societies based on information and philosophies they gathered from human records. As a result, many machines you meet have taken upon themselves the names of various philosophers. In the game, you meet a machine leader of Pacifist Village who named himself after Pascal and lives after Pascal's wager. But when his peaceful village is attacked, he, the children, and the player flee to an abandoned factory. The player fights off the hordes of evil machines until Pascal decides to give up his pacifist ways, hacks a giant robot, and saves the day. Upon returning to the children to see if they are alright, they find a horrifying scene. The children have all committed suicide out of fear of the evil machines. Pascal here, like his real-world counterpart, taught that living peacefully required fearing powers greater than your own. However, this teaching was poison to the minds of the children to the point uh, that the pressure of fear was too much and they gave in. This is the problem of fear, that Pascal believed that we should fear the wrath of God and so choose to believe in him. I suppose this thinking was a result of Pascal being a major pessimist, having said, man's greatness comes from knowing he is wretched. However, most are atheists because they desire to never worship such a vengeful god who would punish them to hell simply for not believing. Fear is a heavy load to bear, but love, the love is light. Charity, specifically, is the love of God, for such a being could not create the universe so meticulously unless he was deeply passionate about it. The knowledge he has would cause him to be understanding and sympathetic towards everything that happens in it. A reading of the Old Testament may cause a person to have the impression that God is a vengeful and jealous God who freaks out at every tiny little thing. But a behind-the-scenes look in the Book of Moses reveals a God who wept at the prospects of a wicked people and the knowledge that he had to send a mighty flood to kill all but Noah and his family. It is not their wickedness, but their misery, not their disobedience, but their suffering that elicits the God of Heaven's tears," wrote Terrell and Fiona Givens. The Great Flood was in the wisdom of him who knoweth all things, that he might bring those souls unto him and prevent them from sinning further. God does not instigate pain or suffering, but he can weave it into his purposes. God's power rests not on totalizing omnipotence, but on his ability to alchemize suffering, tragedy, and loss into wisdom, understanding, and joy. Thank God that I worship a God who is a God of love and wisdom instead of fear and wrath. A God which prioritizes mankind's happiness above all else. We believe God created three heavens, each of which is a place or state of being which a person can feel most comfortable depending on his or her mortal choices. In the end, it does not matter if you are atheist or theist, because in the end, we will all come to the understanding 
of the reality of God or truth, and are given our own place in the kingdom of God, because death creates a theist out of all of us. According to the scriptures, perfect love casteth out all fear. In other words, undying love for God casts out fear of God and all other things. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, watch some more videos, and keep it righteous, guys.